probably Bob one. I ain't tight. Yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I ended up in this situation. Alright, in today's video, we are going to be going over a build I did not intend to make a video on in the first place, but here we are. I was actually satisfied enough with the results as it was my first time building anything that was meant to float and move on water. And yes, my last video on the model airplane from scratch wasn't exactly a success, you can check it out here, but this one actually was. Let's get it. This is the water vessel boat floating pipes thingy. I don't know, whatever you want to call it, but yes, it is a PVC pipe based pontoon style boat. It is a fully DIY and built from scratch remote controlled water vessel with a water quality monitoring system on board. I was really impressed with the floating and buoyancy characteristics as it was my first time building anything like that. And yes, my dumbass did this. And did that have consequences? Yes. Yes, it did. But that was a problem for past me. Future me editing here. P.S. I regard that as one of the dumbest tests I've done in my life. And yes, if anyone notices, it's been almost a year since I released my last video. A lot has been going on this year. I finished up university and a bunch of other things, but from now on, I'll show you more regular videos on whatever I'm working on. You can also check out my personal socials where I'll try my best to upload clips of projects that I'm working on that probably won't make it to the main channel. But yeah, back to the video. First of all, for this project, I had a few criteria I needed to achieve. One, it must float. Two, you must have a water quality monitoring system on board. More on that later. Three, you must be remote controlled. And most importantly, it had to be as cheap as possible. And I had a deadline of a week plus for building after designing. Now, did that mean I could cut corners? Yes. Yes, I could. And of course I did. But of course, none of that would harm the final functionality of the project. Those points led to the checkboxes for this project. One, a responsive water quality monitoring system using three sensors and an ES332 to communicate with the Blink app. And no, I'm not sponsored by them. I wish, but they're just really functional and good for prototyping. 2. An Arduino base transmitter and receiver for remote control. 3. Two brushless motors with propellers in a configuration for differential thrust. 4. A battery pack made by me using 18650 LiPo batteries and an affordable charging system to pair with it. 5. A dual PVC pipe structure that floats to carry everything. Now, first of all, the vessel had to be around 2 feet in length. So I hopped into Fusion 360 and I designed it using two 4 inch PVC pipes, each with an end cap to make it watertight, and then three beams of 1 inch pipes that were cut and spaced 8 inches in between the two of the 4 inch pipes. I later decided to switch to a 1.5 inch pipe I found when buying materials on the spot because it looked like they would be way sturdier and they would fit better. Then, with the three pipes positioned equidistant from each other, I had an acrylic sheet sit as the base to hold up all the electronics. I then designed two triangle mounting thingies for the two brushless motors I selected while considering the 1045 prop height in the design. I also made an animation cause, why not? On to the electronics. Now, I spent a fair bit of time deciding what electronic components to use. I threw open facing and started designing it with all my considerations in mind. First of all, dealing with what I was most familiar with, the transmitter and receiver. I designed it using a pair of Arduino Nanos and nrf 2 for l one modules which I used in my previous plane project and gesture control robots. At first, I was going to go with underwater propellers but I changed my mind as I couldn't get the right props in time and I didn't want to deal with shafts and rudders. So I went for regular props placed above the water level which reflected in the vessel design. I selected two 1000 kV brushless DC motors that can pull up to a max of 10 amps continuous with a peak current draw of 12 amp and can generate about 800 to 1200 grams of thrust according to ChatGPT because I was too lazy while writing the script. The motors were then paired with a 3S battery configuration and 10 inch props as these were the best deal for the price range and they were the recommended choice for the motors. Now of course I would have loved to calculate buoyancy, vessel drag, required thrust but cut me some slack, my working conditions for this project weren't exactly the best. Next, for the water quality monitoring system, I selected the TDS sensor, turbidity sensor and temperature sensor. Of course, there's a plethora of other sensors that I would have used and they could have given me different parameters but I was in a tight budget and I did try to sneak in a PS sensor but after having bad experiences with one I got from AliExpress when I chickened out on costs on a previous project, I decided to just stick with these three. As for the power supply, I was going to make a battery pack, spot weld these 18650 batteries together and then connect them in a 3S 2P configuration to a 3S BMS which would then power the vessel. But I don't have a spot welder. 
So instead, I used these two S18650 LiPo battery cases. I then converted them to two P cases, then hooked them up in a 3S configuration and attached them to the BMS. Now, I knew from the very beginning that these batteries weren't above 1C rating, but I did expect the 3000 mAh rating that they were advertised for. But I guess I was too hopeful as you'd see later on. The power supply also supplied power for the water quality monitoring system and eventually a double rocker switch was used to either switch the power on for the remote control system or for the water quality monitoring system. The 3D card and design circuit schematic will be available in the links below. Hopefully I've been able to upload them to GitHub and shift it from using Google Drive links. Sorry about those drive links before. Now, with most of the designing phase done, I proceeded to build and with barely 7 days on the deadline. Before that, I want to say this video was in fact sponsored by none other than just me. So please make sure to subscribe for more projects, leave a like and comment if you like this type of project. If you'd like to see my personal and legend social media accounts, you'll find the link in the description below. Thanks so much for your support. Now don't forget to subscribe or you'll end up with bad soldering on your next project. First, I built prototypes of all the circuitry on breadboards, then transferred them to a Vero board and soldered all the components, headers and everything else. I started with the water quality monitoring system and then I went on to the circuit for the remote control system for the vessel. Once that was completed, I proceeded to testing them like you can see here. After that, it was on to making the mainframe next. I got my very own hacksaw, level up, and started hacking away. Trust me when I say my first set of cuts were everything but straight. After a few tries, I got it sorter and like I said earlier, I didn't intend to make a video on this so I barely have clips of the working process unfortunately. But here's the rest of the process nonetheless. After cutting the main 4 inch tubes to 2 feet parts, I also cut the supporting beams and then washed everything, including the end caps I got. Yes, I know my end caps are not exactly the same as what I had in my card design but it was what I could find. With that done, I used tape to draw up the accurate hole placement for the beams and then I used a heat gun and soldering iron to make some very tight fitting holes and yes, it was an awfully smoky process but it gives me damn near perfect holes for the beams. Alright, before gluing anything, I put it all together and I was very impressed with the balance and fitting. Then I glued the beams first, one after another, so that I could have access from the ends to apply glue as the pipe sat in the board holes. I used PVC glue as recommended by the local plumbers and it worked perfectly. I know before I put on any electronics, you all are going to be looking out for the flow test. No, no I did not do one. Instead, I went on to create the motor mount and then glued everything together using layers of acrylic two-part glue and then some hot glue on top. I used the thickest trouble that I could find for the triangle mount and as I couldn't get acrylic pieces cut for it, they were the best options I had. After confirming that they were pretty solid, then I mounted the motors. The electronic mounting came next. This was done on the acrylic sheet which was glued down. Then I positioned the batteries and the two circuit boards and hooked them up to their respective terminals on the switch. I then proceeded to make a straw board casing with a top removable cover for it. After mounting, I did some more tests. I know people are going to be like, won't this trouble get wet? Yes, yes it would. So I wrapped up everything in a sheet of transparent plastic film to prevent any water from reaching the straw and affecting the strength while closing up any holes that water could enter into the main casing through. Uh, now for the main remote control test you saw earlier. Next I filled up my bath and decided to test if it floated in there. And what do you know? It did. And for over 30 minutes without dropping in height, meaning there were no leaks and I was so happy this was how the system turned out. Then I proceeded to do this. And yeah, that sound had consequences. Because after that, whenever I moved the throttle stick forward, one brushless motor started moving before the other. And I did write the code for both to start at the same time. It also is based on variable differential thrust, meaning based on whatever speed you set it to, 
The more you moved it either the left or the right direction, the slower one of the motors got until one completely stopped moving and one was moving at full throttle. In that configuration, the remote control would allow it to turn the vessel in varying direction and at varying speeds. All in all, it was a great project which distressed me out given the fact that I just made it in a few days and although I couldn't test it in a huge body of water, I do plan on making one of these again and I might as well slap a hydrofoil under, use some EDF fans and try to make it as fast as possible. I don't know yet but it should be one of the next projects I'll be working on. Comment if you'd like to see version 2 and what other projects you'd like to see me work on. If you want to see how I built the robotic arm in record time or how I made my first model plane from scratch, you can see them here and even how I made a gesture controlled robot, click on them. Subscribe or you get bad soldiers on your next project.